A Silent Night Generation presents The Walking Dead Company Part 3 If you snore any louder, more of those necro-freaks will come at us. How long was I out? Four hours, give or take. I knocked out two, but we're good in here. Might want to check on your boy, though, just in case. I'll be back. Not alone, you're not. I'll get by. If I need help, I'll yell for you. Yeah, well, times like this, anyone that's screaming is already done. Like I said before, I get the whole route security thing for the kid, and I get that you don't trust me. I wouldn't trust me either, but given the circumstances, you need me around. Well, I'm pleased to disappoint you. I figured I had a choice in how I can protect what's left of my life. Which you're doing a real bang-up job on. In the shape that kid's in, it's a miracle you've gotten this far. He's struggling to even stand upright as he is. A less patient person would have treated him as the dead weight he may as well be. You take that back. Right now. You want to swing at me? Swing. One thing we got in common is that we're not afraid of each other. But I swear to God, if you don't kill me in one shot, you will be. I'm... I'm sorry, I'm just... Whatever, go. Just try not to piss off the next person that gets you out of the shit. They won't be as cool as me. Self-righteous as she came off, she was right. That's why I took some time to write all I had to this point and get Neil out of his room. He made up, for the most part, but he's still feeling raw about his detention. Fixing it so no skinless don't come at him by blocking his room's door. I didn't mean to leave him for that long, but I had to play nice for the woman. After all, she was testing me, just as much as I had to test her. Time to go back and apologize, I suppose. Yes, two points. <laughs> okay, you you hold your horses. I gotta take care of him, then I'll take care of you. Everybody gets their head chopped off, so it'll be fine. Welcome back. I see you brought a friend. My name's Neil. Tessa, right? Yep. Miss Strittnatter here told me lots about you. Used to run track for your school? Yeah, I was looking to- He would have gotten into any college looking for strong legs and young spirit. But then all this happened. Yeah, everyone's dreams got smeared in shit once this went down. There is a bright side, though. (laughs) Like hell. No, really. No more bills, no more taxes, no more underhanded debts owed. No more bad reality shows? I like the way you think, sir. Listen, about earlier. You're absolved, shut up. But if you're still feeling some way about it, I do need some help. There's a lot of abandoned cars here. Figured I'd finally fix one up and get moving around someday. Little hard to work on one when you got the skinless all around. So what, you just looking for security? Basically. You did a good enough job with him. Figured we... Sisters at arms can look out for ourselves as well. Sisters at arms, huh? I can help too. I'm not completely useless. Didn't say you were. What you can be is behind the wheel when I get to one that's still worth a damn. We ladies can push it to the house while you do that. Everything else should be cool from there. The guy you were talking about before. The one you kicked out. How's he get away? By taking the one good car there was. I called her Elsie. Oh well. You two game? Yeah, sure. I go where he goes. I bet. Alright, I know beggars can't be choosers, but I feel like an SUV. You like her, don't you? What's not to like? Her attitude reminds me of the way things used to be. Fun, cool, far from the prying eyes of a psycho. 
You're lucky I don't punch the shit out hey, of Hey, party's over here. I'm gonna deal with you later. We helped her the way she helped us. We found her a precious SUV to call her own, and we got it moving in some way. I like that one. Naturally, a few skinless came at us, but we handled it. <laughs> Bite me. Then came the matter of siphoning gas from the other cars, which she didn't have as much of a stomach for. But Neil had some experience in doing so. Picked that skill up from one of the last groups we were with. Following her 12-point inspection, we got it to turn over, but we're still here. As if she's waiting on something. Hey, put the pad down and socialize, why don't you? Where's Neil? The little boy's room. I gave him one of my knives just in case. What do you mean, just in case? I thought we were safe here. We are, from the... <sighs> Those fucking things. Humans, however, they can be sneaky. Even worse than before. Don't I know it. Long time ago, there was this guy. We'll call him Steve. He was friends with this great family of four. Husband, wife, nine-year-old son from one's previous marriage, and Celine, their eight-year-old daughter. For a long time, that guy was trusted, even with the occasional babysitting task. And all was cool. No harm, no sign of creepiness. Even got to meet Steve's longtime girlfriend, who he was ready to marry and move to Jamaica with. Days after the daughter's 16th birthday, one of the parents came home and found a letter, allegedly written by her, saying, Ran off with Steve. I love you all. Three days later, she's found half-naked at a truck stop three states away, shaking and crying that she was kidnapped. Obviously, she didn't write that letter, and the whole time, Steve was minding the children. He allegedly waited to see the daughter grow up to be a solid, fit young woman. Fit enough to drug and cart off to do whatever he wanted with her. That's horrible. They found Steve dead in a motel room. The keys to his car lodged right into his throat. Pretty little girl got her hands dirty, even if for a worthy cause. Now I told you that this world's just made the crazy ones finally live in the open. Cannibals, rapists, that's all expected. But as fucked as this world's become, I personally figured I would never hear a story like this one ever again. Then I met you. What are you talking about? Neil? <laughs> Next time, the conclusion. While one sleeps, the truth is revealed, and a price is paid for it. <laughs>